Vancouver Kingsway. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Speaker. Uh, in the discussion, the process that um, we all engaged in about uh, this question of an apology, this question of historical reconciliation, we on the opposition side joined with young people. And in my constituency of Vancouver Kingsway, and I think you can speak of uh, virtually any constituency in British Columbia where this is true, particularly uh, the communities uh, in Metro Vancouver. Uh, we have schools such as Gladstone and Windermere, people who participated in the meeting that we held, that are diverse and extraordinary because every day people work together. And we kind of, because those of us who go to those schools and work in those circumstances uh, regularly, take it for granted. But even today, even at this time in history, 59 years after the founding of the United Nations, in most parts of the world, what we have here is actually quite unusual. And it is, I think, an extraordinary thing that the Premier of British Columbia, Richard McBride, could declare as a fact of provincial policy, as it was for decades, that British Columbia must be a white man's province, but that the students who go to Richard McBride Elementary behave differently, are differently, as diverse as the province itself. I think I want to say just a couple of things specifically. I think the member for Vancouver, Mount Pleasant, laid this out very clearly. But what we're talking about is a period which represents pretty much half of the history of our province, from its founding to 1871 to really the first breath of true equality in 1947, the elimination of racism from our immigration policies in 1967, but the first half of the history of our province, the question and the policy of a white man's province was a banal reality of life. 89 pieces of legislation from 1871 to 1928. 89, 49 resolutions of the legislature. So determined, Honorable Speaker, was the legislature to follow this policy that they passed 24 bills disallowed by the federal parliament, a legislative riot. And in 1928, a motion was presented in this legislature, also passed unanimously, that proposed that the majority of Chinese Canadians and the majority of Japanese Canadians living in British Columbia at that time be deported back to China and Japan. Passed unanimously in the legislature. This was the consensus view. So how do we deal with that now? Why do we think an apology is important? Because some people argue this point. Let's face it, some people argue this point. They say, why apologize? These things happen in previous generations. Governments are quick to apologize for past wrongs and not present wrongs. But the reality is, I think, threefold. One, an apology is due. People lost. The member for Burnaby Norris family lost. And an apology is due to them. Secondly, this is part of who we are. You know, Bertolt Brest once said that uh, in the dark times, will there be singing? Yes, there'll be singing about the dark times. We have to, I think, acknowledge that this is also part of who we are, what brought us to the point that we're at today. Acknowledge it, work with it, build with it, and celebrate our history in all its facets. Thirdly, these are moments, surely, of education, moments where we learn about what can happen in societies and what we must do to prevent that happening. And finally, these issues are always with us. There are always lessons to learn. The fact of the matter is that Chinese Canadians and First Nations and Japanese Canadians and South Asians were brought to Canada. Remember, 37 men for every woman in the Chinese Canadian community in 1922. Brought to Canada and denied a path to citizenship. What has made this province great, what has made it prosper, is an open approach where people come to our country and they follow a path to citizenship. And we must remember that that is a source of prosperity and dynamism in our society. And we must always ensure, I think, that that is a foundation 
of how we act as a society. So, honorable speaker, I think this is a great day. It's wonderful to be here with so many people from the Chinese Canadian community to recognize the participation, not just of Chinese Canadians, but of all Canadians in this process, all people in our province who engage in this process. And why I think it's also important to see this Apology is often seen as an, with the idea of closure. But in fact, I think we have to continue to engage. It's why it was so important that there be a legacy aspect to this process, that this not be seen as somehow the end of the discussion, but part of a broader discussion that we must constantly have as a society. It's a source of pride, I think, for all of us to be here today, to recognize, honorable speaker, that we have changed as a society, but that we have work to do, and to acknowledge these terrible wrongs of the past with the hope of building a bit better future. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. And with that, I move adjournment of the debate.